The LG G5 has been getting a lot of attention for its camera, but does this dual lens shooter stand up to the hype? Let's find out right now. Hey guys, welcome to Bleeding Edge TV. I'm Andrew Edwards. This is the show that brings you news and reviews through the azagearlive.com. And a few weeks ago, I brought you my initial review, first look at the LG G5 smartphone. It was announced at Mobile World Congress. I got my hands on it roughly a week or so later and brought you some initial impressions of this new smartphone. Now at the end of that video, I asked you guys to send me your questions. What did you want to know? What did you want me to go more in depth on regarding the LG G5? One of the biggest responses I got from you guys was you wanted to know more about the camera. How does the camera work? There's that dual lens system. There's two cameras on the back of this phone. Was the camera good? Was the camera bad? Could you see some examples of photos and videos? So in this episode, we're taking a look at the LG G5 camera. In case you haven't seen it, you'll probably want to start with my initial LG G5 review, which I'll link in the description box below. That'll give you a full rundown of everything the LG G5 can do. However, if you're here because you want to find out more about the camera specifically, let's jump into it. Now, one thing I want to say before we get started so you know exactly what you're looking at here. All of the images and video footage that you'll see in this review are taken directly off of the LG G5 with no filters or effects applied to them. The only time where this won't be the case is when you see the actual LG G5 itself on camera like you see here. The LG G5 features a dual camera system on the rear, which features a 16 megapixel camera with hybrid infrared autofocus and an 8 megapixel pixel 135 degree wide angle camera as well. This dual sensor setup coupled with LG's camera software results in a great picture taking experience. Rather than focusing on gimmicks like 3D images like other dual lens systems in the past, LG gives you access to both sensors individually. You can toggle between the two by tapping on the single tree and triple tree icons within the app to pick which one you'd like. Comparing the two cameras to each other, the 16 megapixel version is your main shooter, offering laser autofocus, which results in very fast, very accurate autofocus for whatever you point the camera at, coupled with an f1.8 aperture, which does a great job in low light settings. I've done a lot of shooting in dim indoor conditions and outdoors at nighttime, and I have yet to see another smartphone that can perform as well in the dark, and that's including the iPhone 6S and Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge. When shooting, the colors are accurate, the contrast is above average, and the dynamic range is on point. It does a good job at capturing detail in the shadows while simultaneously not letting the highlights get out of control. Now let's talk about the 8 megapixel wide angle lens. At 135 degrees, it's very wide, and as such, you can expect a little distortion, but not as bad as a GoPro. It's a side effect of being able to get a bunch more of what you're looking at into your shot. It works great for tight areas where you don't have a lot of room, as well as for sweeping landscapes. Now this wide angle camera has an f2.4 aperture, so you're still going to get a decent amount of light, but not as much as the main 16 megapixel megapixel camera. The camera app supports three modes. You have simple for basic shots, auto, which allows you to use some of the software effects like panorama and pop out for using both cameras at once to take more stylized shots. And then there's manual, which gives you control over manual focus, shutter speed, ISO sensitivity, white balance, you can choose between shooting in RAW or JPEG and much more. Oh, and let's not forget about the selfie camera on front. There you've got an 8 megapixel camera that has a few tricks of its own. First, it does a good job at resolving detail, contrast, and colors. The display can be used as a flash, which is a nice touch. And the selfie camera also has an auto shot mode where it will automatically take your picture when your face stops moving without you needing to do anything else. Just smile and the phone takes the picture for you. As far as video goes, the LG G5 shoots at a maximum 4K at 30 frames per second and 720p at 120 frames per second for slow motion. When shooting in 4K, you get a 48 megabit per second bit rate, which means you get nice, smooth footage with little noise and lots of detail. Even better, everything as far as white balance, contrast, and dynamic range shine here just as well as they do on the still photos taken with the G5. When shooting video, optical image stabilization works nicely and does a decent job of eliminating camera shake, but the digital stabilization ended up producing more consistent results to my eyes. It truly does feel like a pro camera app. The overall quality on the camera system on the LG G5 is true flagship quality. It lives up to the name, so much so that I'd say that if the camera is of utmost importance to you and you're looking for a new Android smartphone to pick up, then the LG G5 should be at the top of your list for phones to to consider. Now I want to know what you guys think. 
Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below with your thoughts. Let me know what your favorite smartphone camera to date is and what you think about the camera on your current device. Do me a favor and hit that subscribe button as well if you're new here to find out when we publish new videos, reviews, unboxings, and gadget giveaways. We launch new giveaways a couple times a month and you can see what's up for grabs right now in our gadget giveaways playlist. Thanks for watching as always guys. Until next time, I'm Andrew Edwards. I'll catch you in the next video.